Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, to continue with our discussion on severe plastic deformation, okay, to in the, this last lecture of this particular module, okay, I am presenting a case study and uh, I am using friction stir processing again as uh, the technique uh, for this particular case study and we are looking at the one of the uh, deformation uh, uh, method or the one of the deformation process which is called superplasticity. Okay, I have mentioned this particular word uh, couple of times during previous lectures. Okay. So, I will introduce you what do we mean by superplasticity. Okay. So, basically superplasticity if uh, you want to define, okay, it is the capability of very fine grain polycrystalline material. Okay. So, one of the requirement is that you should have very fine grain uh, materials, okay. polycrystalline already we have a polycrystalline material usually in all engineering applications uh, and they undergo very high uh, tensile plastic deformation. Okay. So, if you see the, the sample uh, which was initially uh, of this size, okay, after deformation it has uh, shown the deformation of around 1000 percent here. Okay. So, very high elongation 1000 percent means in normal engineering alloys high ductility means 30 40 percent if some alloy is showing 30 40 percent uh, elongation that is considered as very good ductility. Okay. Whereas, in this particular condition you can see the elongation is around 1000 percent. Okay. So, and the uh, other unique uh, thing which you can see here is that the, the deformation is uh, is uniform throughout the gauge length. Okay. So, it, it is a one single dimension you can see from very close to the shoulder to the other part of the shoulder, the deformation is uniform. Okay. There is no deformation localization, there is no neck formation. Okay. So, this kind of elongation very uniform uh, elongation you are able to get. Okay. So, in this case in this particular uh, materials you can get very high elongation. And uh, in superplastic uh, region, uh, of course, stress is a strong function of a strain rate, okay, and that is what we call as strain rate sensitivity. Okay, so couple of graphs are shown here. Okay, that when you plot a uh, lawn of strain rate versus lawn of sigma, okay, in superplastic window, you see that the the slope is quite high, where material shows superplasticity, and then uh, m start decreasing. Okay, that is where in this particular material we say power law breakdown is there and in lower strain rates you will start going towards the creep kind of deformation. Okay. So, there is a strain rate window in which the strain rate sensitivity is very high. So, if you see uh, the m as a function of ln of strain rate, okay. so m has been calculated from the slope okay, of the top graph. Okay. So, you see that the m is very high where the superplasticity is expected okay. and m is usually more than 0.4. What is the effect of m? Okay. Already we have seen that when m of the material or strain rate sensitivity of the material increases, okay, your elongation is increasing. Okay. So, for example, m of 0.6 is able to give you an elongation of around 1000 percent okay. and these are true for uh, different set of materials. For example, here titanium and zircol is are plotted okay. and uh, when m is lower than 0.4 or around 0.3 you cannot even reach maybe around 100 percent or so. Okay. And as you go towards uh, m of 0.1 let us say the, the, the elongation is around 50 percent. Okay. So, the elongation is a strong function of strain rate sensitivity. Okay. 
The application of superplasticity is of course, superplastic forming. Okay. Uh, the idea is that when you have superplastic deformation, okay, these are all high temperature deformation, the flow stresses are very low. Okay. So, you can deform a material just by using gas pressure. Okay. So, all these parts which you are seeing here, okay, uh, these part, these part, they are formed, these are metallic part, but formed only using gas pressure, which we, you, we do generally in case of glass blowing operation or uh, making some plastic part okay that is these these uh, products are made by just applying a gas pressure okay and whatever the die shape is there the material take that shape okay so this is what uh, is uh, one component is taken out from a furnace so you keep it in furnace apply the gas pressure and whatever is the die shape on the other side you can get uh, the, the shape of that die so, you can form very complex shapes as you can see one shape here, okay. very complex shape, okay. very complex geometry and this can be made only in one, one go means only uh, one cycle you can produce the whole thing. If you are going to do with this with conventional uh, fabrication method, all these parts will have to be made separately and then they will be joined using welding or some uh, uh, riveting uh, techniques. Okay. So, in one shot you can get a very complex shape like this uh, in super plastic uh, for, uh, through super plastic forming. Okay. So, as I was telling you that for example, this is your initial sheet which is shown by orange color. Okay. Then you have applied the gas pressure and the shape of the die is shown here. Okay. So, when we are applying the gas pressure the sh sheet is deforming. So, this red one is the deformed sheet after forming. Okay, and it is able to take the shape of the die by applying a, a, a constant pressure. Okay. Other very good advantage of superplasticity and superplastic forming is that you can deform or you can form these complex geometries in materials like titanium and magnesium, okay, which are hard to deform okay, because they have hexagonal close spec structure, HCP structure. Okay. So, they have very limited slip system. So, deformation at room temperature uh, through dislocation movement is very difficult okay. and they generally have very low ductility. Okay. But with this uh, technique because here the deformation is not through dislocation movement, the deformation is through grain boundary sliding which is what we call as GBS. Okay. So, the st crystal structure is not a factor here okay, because deformation will be on the grain boundary. So, you can easily form material uh, uh, of titanium and magnesium alloys also through this process and the advantage of doing that with titanium and magnesium is that they are ha they have low density. Okay, so, these are lightweight, so very important for aerospace application. Okay. So, this is what already we have discussed about the strain rate sensitivity. Okay. Now, what is the effect of what are the general requirements for a material to show uh, superplasticity? Okay. Uh, there are three main condition for example, that the microstructure should be equiaxed, okay. has equiaxed grain morphology that means in any direction if you measure the grain size it will be it will have same size okay. and the grain size in conventional superplastic should, should, should be less than 10 micron, okay. around 10 micron it can be 15 micron also, but the limiting condition is around 10 micron. Okay. Because when you have fine grain material then only you have more grain boundaries okay. and then the deformation happens through grain boundary sliding okay, as already I told you. So, all these equiax grains, finer grain size helps in the grain boundary sliding process. Okay. The deformation condition, uh, is the temperature has to be above 0.4 or 0.5 Tm. Okay. So, this is where uh, you have high temperature deformation conditions okay. and the strain rate is around 10 to the power minus 3 per second. Okay. So, strain rates are very low as compared to other farming processes or or deformation processes. So, that is the only drawback of, of superplastic deformation 
Okay, one is of course high temperature that you have to take material to high temperature, and the other is the uh, pre, uh, the very slow strain rate. So when we are doing forming, also one part will be produced in a very long time. Okay, so the productivity will be low if you have a super plastic, if you are going for super plastic forming, and of course strain rate sensitivity is already told should be more than 0.4. Okay. And what is the effect of grain size? If you see the grain size, how it affects the strain rate sensitivity m. Okay. So, these are strain rate values, this 10 to the power minus 4, this 10 to the power minus 3 and so on. Okay. And the m values are 0.1 here, okay, 0.2 here and so on. Okay. And the grain size is increasing in this direction. So, the effect of grain size is that as grain size is decreasing, Okay. Uh, th uh, for example, uh, okay, they have shown in inch, uh, uh, you do not have to worry. So, grain size is decreasing in this direction and you can see that what is the effect of decrease in grain size on strain rate sensitivity. So, as grain size is decreasing, the strain rate sensitivity of the material is increasing and of course, you have to look for the super plastic window here which is around 10 to the power minus 3 here. Okay, so, above that only you have strain rate sensitivity of more than 0.4. Okay. So, in this window and as the grain size is reducing my m is increasing okay. and you can also see that as m is in, as grain size is reducing my uh, window for high strain rate sensitivity is going towards higher strain rates. Okay. So, for example, uh, in a very fine grain material, I can have uh, super plastic window extended up to uh, 2, to 2 into 10 to power minus 3. Okay. So, if you can reduce grain size further, you can still go to higher strain rates. So, the effect of grain size is very strong that by reduction of grain size, the M increases and also the window for high strain rate sensitivity shifts towards the high strain rate. Okay. That means, I can deform at at a higher standard that means my the time for deformation will be smaller now okay now for getting a super plastic deformation or material for super plastic which can exhibit super plasticity okay usual method is of course uh, your normal thermomechanical processing to have recrystallization in the material to generate fine grains uh, fine grain size material okay so, normal thermomechanical processing uh, like rolling, extrusion and all these processes are already there. Okay. So, precipitation will be done and uh, preci precipitation is sim uh, simulated nucleation of grains, uh, new finer recrystallized grains will be there. All those complex thermomechanical processes are there for production of material suitable for super plasticity. The problem with those methods is uh, you have to have very intimate knowledge about materials to get uh, material suitable for super plasticity. Okay. In this uh, friction start processing is a, is, is a, a very promising technique okay, which has been able to generate this fine grain size material in one cycle. So, just by traversing the tool through the material you are able to generate the fine grain size material in one one shot okay so i don't have to do a very complex thermomechanical process to get the fine grain size material and the material the microstructure which is there in the nugget zone or the stir zone okay fine grain size material uh, fine grain size microstructure that is uh, able to satisfy the condition required for super plasticity okay already whatever requirement in that we have seen. So, the microstructure which is in the stir zone or nugget zone is the one which is able to satisfy those conditions. Okay. Now, the problem with FSP uh, is that uh, with this which we have already seen that you have a microstructural gradient. So, only the microstructure will be refined depending upon the thick uh, the length of the pin. Okay. So, if my pin is up to here, the refinement will take place up to here. Okay, uh, recrystallized grains will be there, and above that it will be a thermomechanically affected zone. Means it is elongated grains, not recovered grains. Okay, which is not suitable for super plastic uh, super plasticity. So this uh, material is su suitable for super plastic 
uh, deformation as defined in our um, previous slide. Whereas, this material and above this coarse grain also this you can say is non superplastic, they cannot exhibit superplasticity. Okay. So, now the, the uh, idea here is that to understand this deformation behavior of these fine grain coarse grain material separately and then what is the uh, effect of this combined microstructure on the superplastic deformation. Okay. So, one should understand that, 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 that is when only we will be able to use FSP as a technique for uh, microstructure uh, for superplasticity. Okay. So, the idea is to understand individual deformation behavior of fine grain material, coarse grain material and the combination of this which we will be calling as composite material, composite microstructure. Okay. Before going to that, okay, uh, we, we have discussed about multipass that I can use multipass FSP to get a bulk microstructure okay, or uh, uh, I can use it as a bulk processing. Okay. So, in that it will be a interesting thing to understand that what will be the effect of uh, multiple processing on the material which is already processed. For example, if we are starting from here, this is my first pass and this is my last pass. Okay. So, what will be the effect of this pass, first pass on the material which is still unprocessed that means, I will call it as preheating or what is the effect of last pass on the first pass. Okay then that means, it will be a post heated material post heating. Okay. So, what will be the effect of this individual passes on the microstructure of the material whether microstructure is changing or the properties are changing. Okay. To do that first we measure the temperature okay, that what is the temperature rise when you are doing FSP. Okay. So, suppose the pass has started from here okay, and going in this direction. So, a thermocouple placed here measures the temperature. Okay. So, the temperature goes up to around 3, 250 degree Celsius. Of course, we are measuring the temperature away from the stir zone. Okay. I cannot measure in the stir zone. So, there it is around 250 degree Celsius and then quickly coming down to room temperature in around 200 seconds. The next thermocouple measures the temperature which is placed somewhere here. Okay, uh, temperature rise of 300 degrees Celsius and then coming down also again in a very short time. What is the effect of this uh, when the processing is being done here? What is the effect of that in the, the already processed material that is shown with these two curves here? Okay. That says that the temperature rise in the in the other part of the material is not very high. It is even low, lower than the 100 degree Celsius. Okay, so effect of uh, the first pass on the other other part of the material is very small. Similarly, when you see the last pass, okay, the the temperature rise in the thermocouple which are placed here it is around 300 and 400 degree Celsius. Okay. But the temperature rise in the thermocouple which are placed here okay, is very small only up to uh, less than even 100 degree Celsius. Okay. So, we can conclude that there is not much effect of uh, individual passes on the microstructure of the it uh, should not be too much uh, uh, effect on the microstructure because the temperature rise or the, 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 the temperature comes down uh, to room temperature at a very in a very short time okay, within 200 seconds or so means it is only a exposure of 3 or 4 minutes and there is not much effect of temperature on the other part of the sample. To confirm it more, what we did is we took sample of a large process material from different locations okay. and these are the deformed uh, uh, samples, okay. specimen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and you can see in all the cases the deformation is very similar. Okay. There is not much effect of the thermal cycle on the microstructure as well as, uh, as property of the material. Okay. So, now taking material uh, sample from different part of the microstructure. So, this is a fine grain microstructure sample for that this is for coarse grain okay, and this is for the composite one. 
so in the coarse grain one you can see that there is a large reduction in the in the cross sectional area that means uh, uh, there is a flow localization here whereas in fine grain one one and the composite one uh, more or less the, the the deformation is uniform of course we have gone up to failure that is why you see naking in the last part of the deformation but more or less the deformation is quite uniform okay and the effect of that you can see on the elongations also so at different stranded deformations were done okay uh, the interesting part here is that the fine grain which is shown by this square box okay has, is showing maximum elongation of around 350% whereas the composite microstructure which, which contains both the fine and coarse grain which is shown by this uh, upright triangle okay the elongation is shown around 450% or so okay that means the material which has both fine and coarse grains are showing higher uh, ductility higher elongation okay so somehow uh, it looks like that the fine grain which is there in the nugget zone or stir zone is helping this coarse grain microstructure uh, and in the process you are having continuous dynamic recrystallization okay and this addition of fine grain in the material is helping the composite microstructure to uh, show higher elongation okay so to confirm this uh, what we are proposing okay we did microstructural analysis so this is the initial fine grain microstructure okay uh, only when we have taken the fine grain microstructure okay during during the after deformation it is showing dynamic grain growth okay so the grain size is increasing as you can see this is the initial grain size this is the final grain size so from 5.7 we have come to 13 micron during the deformation if you see the coarse grain uh, uh, part of the uh, fsb material okay after deformation also it remains coarse okay there is no dynamic recrystallization is happening okay coarse microstructure remains coarse so grain size is 40 micron and still it is 40 micron in the after deformation so there is not much change in the microstructure okay and of course ductility is also very low whereas if you see the composite microstructure this is the gradient you can see in the microstructure fine grain coarse grain okay so this is my fine grain this is my coarse grain material okay and after deformation if you see the the microstructure is now uniform throughout the cross section okay so this cross grain microstructure has uh, undergone uh, dynamic recrystallization which is what we call as continuous dynamic recrystallization and refinement is taking place whereas in a single coarse grain material you or uniform coarse grain material you don't see any cdrx okay so these fine grains are somehow helping this coarse grain to to undergo uh, cdrx process and you can see effect on grain size also it is uh, from 29 micron it is going to 16.7 micron the uh, very important effect of this microstructural change you can see on the strain rate sensitivity okay so if you plot the strain rate sensitivity as a function of true strain okay that means after different deformation uh, stages what is the strain rate sensitivity the strain rate sensitivity of the fine grain this is my fine grain layer okay though it is initially very high more than 0.4 but it is continuously coming down with the deformation process and that is due to coarsening of the microstructure as we saw for fine grain material or fine grain size material the m was higher for coarse grain m was coming down we saw one graph like that so because of this dynamic grain growth which is taking place my m is continuously reducing in the coarse grain material of course the m was low from the beginning and it remains low throughout the deformation process there is no change in the microstructure whereas in composite if you see okay the strain rate sensitivities remain continuously high more than 0.4 okay and the reason for this uh, continuously high m is because you are continuously having you are feeding the material with fine grain uh, size uh, microstructure or fine you are continuously refining the microstructure through cdrx process and that is what is helping for m to remain high during the whole deformation process okay 
So, this is what is helping to achieve higher ductility in the composite microstructure. Okay. So, to conclude uh, friction stir processing is an effective and flexible process to refine microstructure which can exhibit superplasticity. Okay. And you can achieve super very good superplastic properties uh, at relatively higher strain rates by introducing this in homogeneous structure a composite structure. And the, you can easily adopt FSP as a bulk processing technique by doing multiple passes. Okay. So, this is a one case study on friction stir processing using severe plastic deformation uh, method which is uh, this FSP okay, and where you can get superplasticity in the material. Okay. Thank you.